so bad, right? Raw, guiding a vehicle equipped with the CVT transmission will cost you thousands in repairs. All right, so a couple of months ago, I showed you guys the inside of the CVT transmission of the, actually this particular vehicle. And what it failed in that was a bearing. And uh, a lot of you commented on it and were pretty, uh, pretty interested in what this thing actually looked like. But there was a few people kind of criticizing why I think that the CVT transmission was kind of a bad idea. So I thought it'd be beneficial to let's just drive this thing so you guys can kind of see firsthand what we're talking about and the people that actually own vehicles with CVTs, why they don't last, and kind of the quirks that you get with driving these transmissions. So we got some traffic here. I'm gonna get out of their way. Let's take this thing for a ride. And we'll just kind of go through it and unpack this. All right, so before I begin, I just figured I would address a few comments in my last video. And if you haven't seen that or are interested in what the CVT transmission looks like when you open it up, uh, I'll put a link right here to that video. But uh, here's a couple of comments that I figured I would address. And a lot of people are saying, you know, lack of fluid, lack of maintenance uh, can cause these transmissions to fail, which is true. Uh, not in my case. This was actually a technical service bulletin that actually was pertained to the transmission. Uh, so I think people are missing the point on that, which uh, whatever. But another clownist that was in the comments, I got to just address this because it was kind of funny. Uh, he says, the majority of problems come from the lack of maintenance and abuse from owners that still have not figured out how to drive a CVT. He then goes on to say, it's not daddy's old Chevy and reading the owner's manual does help sometimes. It sure beats blaming Nisa. So I figured I would address this clownus in particular because there's no doubt about it, the CVTs in every vehicle sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to just say that there, there's one that's like a really good CVT to get because there's just not. And the only example I can give from my experience is the car that I currently have which is this Nissan Rogue and uh, yeah they, they don't hold up and we don't abuse the thing that we've done the maintenance and you name it and uh, it still failed it didn't fail the way that everybody thinks it would fail with the belt braking but it did fail in another way which just indicates the point that the things are a piece of garbage and these transmissions are super expensive they're not cheap by any means uh, so if you buy one of these vehicles for 15 grand used no warranty and uh, you got 80,000 miles on it and you, the transmission craps out you know, you you might be picking up a six thousand, seven thousand dollar plus transmission repair bill, and that's probably for a used one. But anyways, let's hit the test drive, and we'll just kind of discuss on why these things were expensive to replace and all this stuff, and why they were started, and some failure points, just so you guys can be aware of what's going on with these CVTs and in, in all vehicles. It doesn't it just pertain to Nissan, but this is going to be the guinea pig. So let's get into it. All right, so starting out, you know, it's not your daddy's old Chevy. <laughs> All right, so why did they make the CVT, right? Why did they put the CVT in, in all these economy class cars? What was the reason for it? Well, one was the fuel savings, right? The whole worrisome was trying to save on fuel. And uh, in economy cars, that's what you want. You kind of want it to be cheaper. That's what the engineers have tried to figure out to kind of follow along with the government, right? But as you can kind of hear from the audio, the things are noisy. They're, they're whiny transmissions. They don't, uh, they just wind up because they're not shifting like a normal transmission. And so the economy cars, they're not looking for driver fuel. They're trying to focus on economical, cheapest to go, and also fuel economy. That's the whole the whole premise of the CVTs, why they put them in these cars. Now, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to really drive these things. I think you just drive them like a normal car, unlike the guy that was seen in the comment section. And by all means, enlighten me if you have a special way that you can drive these CVTs. Do you put skis on them and just drive them like a snowmobile, sir? Anyways, you can kind of hear it right now. It's winding up. The transmission's trying to do its thing and, and simulate the shift here. And the power band isn't smooth, right? So as you're driving, the power band is its kind of all over the place, and it's not a comfortable power band at all. So again, they're not looking for for a comfort feel it's purely economy get these things moving on the road however even if you have a little bit of fuel savings the transmission costs alone probably just wipes that right out when you have to replace these things so i'm not going to just pick on nissan here they put cvts in a ton of different manufacturers so clearly if you just google cvt failures you'll see a ton of failures of all cvts on all makes and models they're not any more reliable they're actually worse off than any of the other transmissions that are currently out there now another really weak point on these CVT transmissions and it was probably one of the biggest oversights especially with the Nissan was the cooling system uh, and that's just because it was really inadequate for these CVTs to uh, 
to dissipate that heat that it would build up because they do generate so much heat uh, having this belt system and there's so little fluid in this thing that it really can't absorb the heat and when all of a sudden you have these parts that are just really really hot and not lubricated properly the, the fluid will break down and and it really disintegrates all the parts and starts to wear it down much faster and again another personal problem i have is these cvts they just make such a whiny noise and they just always do it and when they start to fail you know obviously like this one they made a ton of bearing almost like a bearing sound noise in this thing say the uh wear and tear because uh, you can't really do much on these transmissions anyways but the way you could combat it would be to one change the fluid and the only things that you can actually service would be the sensors so if you did have a sensor failure uh, you're smart to do it sooner than rather rather than do it later right so typically on the spectrum what we're seeing is uh probably uh anywhere between six thousand dollar repair bill uh just this model uh, and if not more for for a new a brand new transmission which you can't really get right now anyways they're all on back order so like i stated the weakest link actually in the transmission would be the belt um, there are obviously other components that could fail uh, with electronics, stuff like that. But one of the things that we're going to see that fail with these all the time is going to be the belt system on it. So one of the perks that the manufacturer said that the CVTs were supposed to have was the smooth shifting because there really isn't a shift. The claim to fame was the smooth powertrain and the fuel efficiency. Now they claim that the transmission can offer, you know, probably 5 to 10 percent better fuel economy which I don't see it. We don't really notice it in this car at all. So for the Nissans, I doubt it. I'm not really noticing any fuel savings compared to just a regular transmission, you know, that shifts and everything like that. So I find that hard to believe. However, the CVT really does hold a lot less fluid. I think this uh, model itself actually holds six quarts of fluid, which isn't a lot. And these things generate a ton more heat than a normal transmission just because the friction that's going on. But under light throttle, you really don't notice a whole lot. Look at these two guys just pulled out in front of me. And I guess with advantages and disadvantages, with the belt system, you really don't have any gears to worry about, which means you should get a smoother power delivery, which, which I really don't feel, unlike the automatic transmission where you get that kind of clunky driver feel because you got the clutches that keep locking and unlocking up. And for this model, they made it the CVT transmission, obviously to a four cylinder engine, which is a smaller power plant. But they also did equip this into the V6 engines as well, you know, and those actually put down a quite a bit of power. So you see failures in those quite more common, uh, you know, with like the Nissan Altimas with the VQ series and stuff like that. So the moral of the story, if you're looking at trying to buy a vehicle with a CVT transmission, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're really on a tight budget. The problem I see is people that buy these things with a CVT. So the thing that people don't realize is the cost that it takes to replace one of these things. And from my experience, most people don't know how to maintain their vehicle. If some shop suggested, hey, you should do a transmission flush, most people just blow it right off because they've never done it in their entire life. If you don't change the fluids, you're probably never gonna get the, the mileage out of them anyways. And for somebody to chew on a $6,000, $7,000 transmission repair bill, most of you probably can't do that. So um, again, not to not to complain or not to bash or put anybody down, but it's just the, the, the reality of the truth. They're expensive. So that's the only beware thing. Again, if, if uh, you're looking for an economy vehicle and don't care about driver feel, don't care about the noise it makes, don't care about the non-shifting, the anything like that, uh, then CVTs probably would be a no problem. And again, they're economy cars, so they're actually kind of considered disposable. Anyways, hope you found it useful. See ya.